You can save $3 off of your next PlayAsia purchase by clicking the link in the description below and entering the code KUBA. What's going on everybody, it's Kuba, and I'm back with some major information for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Now, this info completely caught me off guard because I literally just woke up. Like, my voice isn't even here yet. And I see all over the internet a screenshot of DLC pack number four for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. So what I'm going to be doing is just breaking down what's in the screenshot, as well as extra information that we have about the Nintendo Switch version of the game. So, first things first, you will immediately see in the screenshot the two characters that we're getting in DLC pack number four, which are, of course, Vegito Blue and Merge Zamasu. Now, of course, Vegito Blue is to be expected. We've known for months now, but we do have confirmation of Merge Zamasu being in the game. And I have to say that this model looks extremely good. Like, compared to the only thing that we had, which was mods, this is a lot more polished and looks just overall so much better. Not only that, we have ultimate confirmation of one of his ultimate attacks, which is going to be Holy or Divine Wrath. So it's really dope to see them implement that move into the game because that was one of his trademark moves in that form was Holy slash Divine Wrath. So to know that he has that move is freaking awesome. But with Vegito Blue, we see that he has two moves. One is, of course, the Beam Sword Slash. I don't know if this is going to be a different iteration because in the screenshot, you can already tell that it's executed differently because he has like one of his legs up. I don't know if he's already slashing or if this is like the beginning of the attack. But in my personal opinion, I think that this might be a different iteration of the Spirit Sword. And then on the right, we see the move that he used on Murtsumasu before he actually split his fusion because the time ran out. But it's, it just looks like a recoloration of Super God Fist. So I'm not sure if there's going to be more to the attack or if that's just, you know, how it is. But all in all, we finally got our first look at the characters for DLC pack number four. There's not much information besides the confirmation and two, well, okay, three moves total, but still. It's great to see them, or at least their models, you know, looking nice, looking kind of crispy, okay? And now we're moving on to, I guess, what is technically going to be the most important thing of this scan, and that is the Nintendo Switch version of the game. And shout out to Gamatsu for translating all of this, which I'll have a link in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourselves. But getting right into the very first thing, with the Nintendo Switch version, they're adding ad hoc co-op play. So. Note that this is a very first for the Dragon Ball Xenoverse series because back in Xenoverse 1, you weren't able to do that because it was on PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PS4, and you couldn't really connect with another console at home to be able to play multiplayer together. You would have to connect over Wi-Fi or you would have to bring somebody over to play, you know, two player on that same console. But with the Nintendo Switch, since you're able to take it with you, then this becomes a possibility. So it says, a first for the Dragon Ball Universe series, using ad hoc correspondence, you can play with up to six nearby players. So that means you have the possibility of running endless battles or complete 3v3 rooms with six people with you. Just a total of six players can just get together, bring their Switches, and have a solid multiplayer Xenoverse experience on the freaking go. That sounds phenomenal, and I can't wait to test that out. But wait, there's more. So the next part is ultimate techniques with the motion sensor. Now, this was something I was not expecting them to add because I thought it was just going to be, you know, a direct port with some minor tweaks here and there, but not to the point where they're acting where they're adding motion sensing capabilities for the game, which is cool. So it says, for example, by using the Joy-Cons with both hands, you can trigger a Kamehameha. Now that's pretty cool. However, I hope they don't make it feel as if, you know, this is Dragon Ball Z for Connect all over again. Like that would be a major mistake. If it flows nice, that'll be cool. But 
if it feels like Dragon Ball Z for Kinect, then it could be a problem. But I do think that that's a cool inclusion. It's not really major, it's just a nice touch, you know, something extra to add into the game to make the Switch version seem a bit more enticing. And I like that. I think that's a really cool and innovative idea, not only for the Xenoverse series, but also for the Joy-Con themselves. And we get some more information, which is two player Joy-Con battles. Battle against a friend on the same Switch using the two Joy-Con controllers. This is the great thing about the Nintendo Switch is the fact that you can just pull out a Joy-Con, hand it to your friend, and it counts as an extra controller. Now, as for how they're going to map the controls properly, I don't know because with the face buttons on one Joy-Con, it's safe to say that it's not going to be the exact same experience as, let's say, using a Pro Controller or both Joy-Con together as one controller because you're missing, you know, a left stick as well as a few extra buttons. But they apparently found a way to make it work. And I remember a long while back, I was trying to think of a way for the individual Joy-Con to work. And in my personal opinion, I deemed that it just was not possible. But I'm so glad I was proven wrong because now you can play against your friends with using the individual Joy-Con. That's really freaking cool. Now, all of that aside, there are actually some new bonuses that we're going to be getting with this pack as well. And I think the very first one is going to be, I guess, a major make it or break it for people who are on the borderline between trying to get Xenoverse 1 to pick up on the story before they get Xenoverse 2. Because the very first one is limited time bonus. Experience the time patrol main story from the first Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Yes, that is confirmation that we will be able to play all of the Xenoverse 1 missions in Xenoverse 2, which also means that we get to body Demigra again. It might be time. It might be. I think that's like they finally gave us a reason not to pick up Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 anymore. So for anybody who is on the fence about getting the first game just for the story before they get the second game, you don't have to anymore. Just wait a little bit and then you will be able to get, I guess, the Xenoverse 1 story in Xenoverse 2. So I say wait, get Xenoverse 2, wait for all this to drop so you can finally, you know, get the complete story in one package, if you will. And the very last thing that's in this information is for early buyers, a code to unlock the characters from the main story early by using this code you'll have access to more than 70 characters from the start. Now, I don't know if they're saying all the characters, because with Hit in particular, you have to unlock him by wishing for him, which isn't bad, but this is a good thing because of the fact that, again, Dragon Ball Universe 2 has been out for quite a while now. It's, it's not a new game by any means anymore. So I highly doubt that a lot of people are going to want to rush through the story mode again just to unlock all the characters and then collect all the dragon balls just to get hits and all that stuff so i'm glad that they gave us an option not necessarily to skip the entire story mode but to speed up the process to get all the characters instead of having to go through the entire story mode if you will so i like what they're doing i really like what they're doing and also, don't forget, I did confirm this a while ago on Twitter, but just remember that the Switch version for um, Dragon Ball Universe 2 will be releasing later on this year. As for when, I don't know, because there's two rumors going around. There's one saying that it's going to be releasing in fall, and there's one saying that it's going to release somewhere near the end of the year or before March 2018. So we don't have a concrete date, but we know that it's coming soon and I can't wait to get my hands on it. But that is all the information we got from this scan. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But nonetheless, that's going to be the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, if you did, please like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at IndicubalYT. And if you want to stay updated for all the videos I upload, don't forget to ring my bell. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys later.